Main article. Mission to Kashyyyk. Great Jedi Purge. Is there still an Imperial transport on the landing platform? Yes. But I think the pilot might be dead. And what makes you think I need a pilot? Leia Organa and Starkiller even in his much reduced state, Ram Kota proved to be a valuable ally, communicating with his contact and providing them with another destination, Kashyyyk, with the assurance that if they retrieved what his contact wanted, he would provide them with further help. While Kota was busy communicating with his contact, Proxy attacked Starkiller, this time using a combat module based on Ki Gon Jin. Although Proxy provided a faithful reproduction of Jin's fighting style, he was hampered by his inability to use the Force as well as the confined space they fought in. Starkiller ultimately ended the battle by impaling Proxy. With the battle over, Starkiller joined Juno and Kota in the cockpit, seeing the Imperial Skyhook being constructed above Kashyyyk. Inserted into the ravaged Kashyyyk landscape, Starkiller made his way towards the local Imperial base, fending off a giant spider ambush along the way. To avoid further ambushes, and to save time, Starkiller ascended up into the leafy canopy of the forests, leaping from branch to branch. Once he spotted the skyhook from ground level, Starkiller was struck by how it resembled one of the visions he had experienced during his reconstruction on the Empirical. Scouting out the Imperial base from the vantage point of the trees, Starkiller dropped down and intercepted a two-man patrol. Using a mind trick, he compelled one trooper to fall asleep while convincing the other that he was authorized to be there. He learned of the identity of the base commander, a Captain Ozick Stern, and that a guest was present in the lodge at the center of the base. As his control over the trooper began to slip, he compelled him to fall asleep as well. He then began planning out his attack on the base. Making his way towards the entrance of the base, Starkiller found his path blocked by an at saint and a contingent of stormtroopers, thus forcing him to attack. Dodging the walker's heavy weapons and ordnance, Starkiller closed the distance and leaped at the legs and the bottom of the cockpit, damaging both knee joints, three control junctions, and the drive engine. The walker managed half a step before it dropped nose first to the ground. As Starkiller set to work on the troopers, he saw two more at ST's closing to hem him in. Drawing deeply upon the force, Starkiller deflected the walker's heavy blaster fire right back at them and telekinetically deflected their concussion grenades into the massive gate protecting the base entrance. As the Imperials intensified their attack, Starkiller allowed the force to completely guide his movements without any conscious thought. As the walkers advanced on what they thought was Starkiller's corpse, he telekinetically took control of their systems and directed them to collide with one another before using a concentrated blast of force lightning to ignite their ammunition stores. Entering the main lodge at the center of the base, he began searching for the item that Kota's contact wanted. His instincts guided him towards the rear of the lodge, and he entered a long, wooden corridor lined with ceramic artwork. The door at the end was guarded by two stormtroopers and an imperial guardsman. The troopers were killed quickly by their own deflected blaster fire, and the guardsmen lasted only barely as long, felled by four swift lightsaber strokes and a blast of lightning. Starkiller took care not to damage any of the ceramic artwork on the walls, calling it his good deed for the day. Entering the guest quarters, he found himself facing Princess Leia Organa in a scene that precisely matched one of his visions while on the Empirical. Leia was initially under the impression that Starkiller was an assassin for Emperor Palpatine and dismissed his assertion that he was here with Ram Kota, believing that Kota had died above Nar Shaddaa. When she offhandedly mentioned her father, Starkiller suddenly realized that he was Kota's contact, feeding him information about Imperial targets. He managed to convince her of Kota's survival and she charged Starkiller with destroying the Imperial Skyhook before it could be used to shuttle Wookiee slaves off planet. While Leia commandeered an Imperial shuttle and left the planet, Starkiller took a tube transport down the cliff the lodge was built on to the forest floor below. As Starkiller made his way through the ravaged undergrowth cleared by the Imperials, he found a dilapidated old hut permeated by a great darkness in the Force. Despite the objections of Kota, Starkiller entered the ruin. Within he found the evidence of a lightsaber duel in the form of burned slash marks on the walls. His search also included the discovery of a small, blue crystal on the floor. As he rose, he was suddenly caught in the throes of a violent force vision. He witnessed the murder of his father, as well as his own abduction from his home by Darth Vader. Then his vision took on a different tone, a contest within himself rather than an image of the past. Embodying the grisly Sith warrior he had fought in a previous vision back at the Jedi Temple, 
he was pitted against a Jedi version of himself. The ensuing duel was brief and brutal, both combatants thrown apart by a backfired blast of Force lightning. Starkiller, as the Sith warrior, ultimately triumphed by grasping the Jedi in a telekinetic stranglehold and impaling him with the plethora of trophy lightsabers hanging from his own waist. He delivered the coup de grace with the Jedi's own lightsaber, stabbing him through the heart. Starkiller then found himself was back in the hut, confronted by the ghost of his father. As he had back on Coruscant, Kento Marek again apologized to his son for all that had happened to him, referring to him by his birth name Galen. Starkiller exited the hut a changed man, his newfound knowledge of his origins shocked him to the core. Arriving at the groundside moorings for the Skyhook, Starkiller plowed his way through the Imperial's security and fortifications. Approaching the first of six moorings, Starkiller resonated with the structure, probing its strengths and weaknesses before channeling massive amounts of force energy into the structure. When he was done, the mooring was unrecognizable. As he moved on to the others, he saw that the Imperials were rallying, this time calling in air support from a trio of TIE fighters. He destroyed four more moorings by telekinetically nudging the fighters into them. A fifth was destroyed through sheer collateral damage. As Starkiller turned to the last mooring, the base commander, Captain Ozak Stern, took to the field. Stern piloted a heavily modified all-terrain Kashyyyk transport, which he used to hunt Wookiee slaves, though he was eager to hunt a Jedi as well. Their battle, however, was rather brief, thanks to the fact that Stern's at KT was not modified to withstand force lightning. After a sufficient beating on the walker, Starkiller then jumped a high distance over the at KT and barraged it with several small bolts of lightning. Realizing he was losing, Stern foolishly tried to reason with Starkiller, but too late, Starkiller ripped the huge sniper rifle off the side of the vehicle and slammed it into the cockpit, following up with a massive force push. The machine toppled over and Stern went flying out of the cockpit, and was soon afterwards grappled and impaled by Starkiller. Afterwards, the seventh moor was destroyed, thus resulting in the explosion of the Skyhook mere seconds later. Despite his success, Starkiller was furious at Kota for his vagueness and withholding of information, and confronted the former Jedi general about it. Kota revealed that his contact indeed was Imperial Senator Bail Organa, who had tried to recruit Kota to rescue his daughter. Kota had refused, so Bail went in search of Shark T. As Kota revealed this, Starkiller accidentally let slip that he knew Shark T had been on Felusha, almost giving himself away, though he managed to cover it up by claiming that Kota's thoughts were simply easy to read. Starkiller retreated into seclusion afterwards and was approached by Juno. He refrained from opening up to her, but took over piloting duties for the trip to Felusha so that she could rest. 